My name's Larry and I am an old age pensioner and yes uh, this week is my birthday and uh, I turn 68 years of age so I guess the clock stops for none of us does it. The reason for this video is that recently I made um, what to me was quite a radical decision to go carnivore. In other words to adopt a carnivore diet and in turn a carnivore lifestyle. Now you might say well what's a carnivore? A carnivore is somebody who eats meat. You might say well I eat meat but a carnivore is somebody who only eats meat. That makes it a whole lot more radical. Now of course there are variations of carnivore and uh, as there are with any uh, particular uh, diet but uh, a carnivore eats meat. Um, why would I make a decision like that to uh, change my diet, my lifestyle and only eat meat? Well in this video I wanted to uh, um, begin to share with you some of my journey and uh, today I just want to talk about some of the factors that led me to make this decision in the first place. It goes back I guess a couple of years now. Uh, really all my life I've had uh, what I consider to be really good health. I've, I've never really been uh, sick enough to be in bed that I can remember. Uh, maybe once or twice if that in, in, in my entire 68 years. Uh, and I've always had a pretty good run health wise. But uh, I had a bit of a wake up call uh, about 18 months ago when I went to my doctor for my uh, annual checkup as you do or as you're meant to do and uh, as a result of that uh, doctor's visit and some subsequent tests that the doctor did um, I went back to see the doctor and um, um, I was told at that visit that I have a fatty liver well to be more precise fatty liver disease that I also have high blood pressure. I was told my blood pressure was something like 179 over 90. That's pretty high even for a, an old guy like me. I was also told that I was um, insulin resistant, a term that I had never heard before, and that I was considered by the doctor to be pre-diabetic. Now as I heard all of this I was trying to take it all in and uh, then the doctor said to me what we're going to do is we're going to get you started on some medication to get your blood pressure down to normal because it is way too high. And so I got my piece of paper that I took to the chemist and I got my first lot of uh, medication from the doctor. I hadn't been on any sort of medication uh, for many years. Um, but now I had uh, a little bottle of pills to get my blood pressure down so I, I dutifully started to take these pills uh, faithfully every, every day and uh, I got myself a blood pressure monitor so that I could keep a watch on it and as I took the pills and the, uh, the weeks went by I noticed that there was no change at all in my blood pressure. It remained that on that very high number. Um, so I did what you do. I went back to the doctor and I said my blood pressure is not coming down and um, my doctor said to me well what we'll do is we'll increase your dosage and uh, uh, my dosage was increased but that still didn't work so I went back to the doctor a third time and this time the doctor said to me well we're going to give you a second tablet to take along with the first tablet. Can you see a pattern here? You see this is what happens when you go to the doctor. They listen to your story, they have a bit of a look at you, they write you a script and uh, tell you to come back and see them down the track. They're very busy people of course. And uh, this, is, this was my lot. I was on two now two blood pressures but my blood pressure was still not getting any, any lower. Um, I was increasingly concerned about the situation. I guess I had what I would describe I always had a, a like a lottery view of health. In other words um, you're eventually going to get something and uh, so you may as well just cop it on the chin. Um, all people around your age will eventually get something and uh, it's uh, you know you you have no say no say in it and uh, you just you, you just cop it sweet. It's kind of like what I would call thinking about it um, 
I would call it a, a, a Doris Day view of health, if you remember that old song. Que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be, the future's not ours to see. Um, that was my view of health. And yet here was the doctor telling me that I had all of these issues all of a sudden that I'd never heard of and that I, I was never never aware of, aware of before. Um, um, I, I had I had some nagging questions that were as I thought about this these these questions came to the surface and I thought um, I, I, the, the question that was bothering me most was was why why have I got high blood pressure why have I got fatty liver disease why am I insulin resistant or pre diabetic what what's caused that and and uh, is there anything I can do to to address that in in the way that I live and the way that I eat and so I got very interested in in these subjects and so I did what many people do I um, went to uh, dr. YouTube and uh, I began to uh, watch YouTube videos and I uh, I, I was searching for anything I could find on the subject of blood pressure, insulin resistance, or um, fatty liver disease. And uh, of course, if you search any of those, you'll be inundated with many, many choices of videos to watch. Now, um, YouTube, I think, is a, a wonderful resource. It, uh, it gives us uh, access to information at the click of a mouse button that... Uh, uh, a few years back, we, we we had no access to at all, and there's wonderful information on there, and there's there's uh, experts in all sorts of areas that share information there. But as you will know, there's also a lot of rubbish on YouTube. There's a lot of people who call themselves influencers or whatever the term is, and uh, they uh, they can get pretty weird. Some of them in what they share. So how do you decide? what to watch I mean you're watching me now so that's a good start <laughs> um, how do you decide what to watch I, I guess for me like many of you you probably have your own little grid but um, I, I, I want to know first of all uh, the person I'm listening to um, what gives them any qualification to speak um, do they have formal qualifications have they got life experience have they uh, um, have they been through um, been through this situation in their own lives or is it theory and head knowledge I also want to know just how they come across you know some people come across as really weird um, other people come across as very genuine that's a very subjective measure I guess but another thing I look for and uh, this one always turns me off um, are they selling something I've been caught like many of you where I've clicked on something and uh, you you eventually find out that what they're selling is a secret formula that they have developed that only they have and you can order them online and uh, they're selling something now I'm not saying everyone who's selling something is is a scoundrel but it kind of put me off if somebody was selling something so I went to uh, uh, look at YouTube and I listened to um, listen to many many videos and I read uh, I also started reading books I think in the last three months I read about 15 books all on the subject of metabolic health of heart disease diabetes insulin resistance uh, diet uh, all of those sorts of books and uh, I found it quite fascinating I had never uh, studied any science when I went to school I was really a high school dropout um, and uh, so the science um, can very quickly get over my head but still I found it very fascinating reading about health and about um, the the issues that I was concerned about and one of the things I noticed is that as I as I listened to YouTube and as I read more and more books the one message that seemed to come across perhaps louder and stronger than any other message was that with issues like high blood pressure and insulin resistance all of the issues that I was facing that they can be reversed by exercise and lifestyle they can be reversed even diabetes too can be reversed by exercise and lifestyle and that got me even more interested because I, I guess like many people I knew that I was 
overweight. Well, I was never uh, what I would call morbidly obese, but, you know, I think in my estimation, I was always, for most of my adult life, I've been what I would consider to be about 15 kilos overweight. And every now and then, like most of us, I would uh, try a diet to uh, uh, lose weight. I think in the earlier days, the very first diet I remember trying was one called the Scarsdale diet. And then it wasn't long until I got onto a another diet, another early one called the Dukin diet. Uh, then, of course, there was the keto diet that became very popular. And I tried that. Um, then paleo became the thing. And I tried the paleo diet. And, uh, um, you know, in, in all of these diets, um, I found one thing. I found that they all worked. You did lose weight on these diets. And uh, um, it, it, it made me, you know, it made me think, well, you know, most of these diets will work if you stick to them. The big problem was, however, that although I would lose weight on every diet that I tried over the years, the weight would always come back. Been reading uh, a couple of a couple of books that I'll mention that I that I did read, particularly about diet, was um, one um, one one by Richard Johnson called The Fat Switch, and uh, an, another by Jason Fong called The Obesity Code. And uh, I found these two books very fascinating. And in both these books, the uh, the authors were suggesting that uh, our body has an internal um, switch, an internal um, meter, if you like, that operates kind of like a thermostat that regulates our weight. And uh, this uh, this is why we can take weight off, but our body will press that switch again and we'll be back to where we were, sometimes even worse than before. Now that made a lot of sense because that was certainly my experience. So anyway, I was reading books, listening to videos, trying to learn all I could. And uh, of course, it wasn't long before I came across what was called the carnivore diet. Now, when I first saw this, I have to tell you, I just uh, had this big reaction within me. I thought that is so extreme. I just thought you could not possibly do that. You, you could not sustain it for any length of time. How could you eat only meat? But I continued to do some research and then I started to listen to people's stories. I was, uh, um, I, I came across a YouTube channel called Zero Carb Life by Dave Mack, where all he does is interview people and uh, very ordinary people and let them tell their stories about their experience on carnival. And uh, I, I got to tell you that uh, stories are very impacting. You know, I can tell you my opinion about something. And of course, you can you, you can disagree and, and argue with me, but when I tell you my story, you know, you can't argue with someone's story and uh, people's stories I find fascinating. So I listened to stories about people who had tried carnivore and had uh, what to me was uh, sounded like amazing results. Uh, in, in their life as a result of this carnivore diet. I was very impacted by people on, on YouTube. Uh, also, um, people like Jordan Peterson, uh, who is well known on YouTube, a psychologist, and uh, he shared his own uh, experience on, on carnivore that was very impacting. And then, of course, he, his daughter, Michaela, had uh, um, what can only be termed as a mir miraculous result. Um, of, of trying the carnivore diet. And uh, so I, I, I thought, well, it does sound a bit extreme, but so many people are saying they're getting good results. And if nothing else, this diet does cut out sugar. It does cut out processed food and it does cut out carbs. Now, I knew enough to know that uh, they are the three biggies when it comes to to diet. I've always been convinced that's why so many diets do work because what they have in common is that they cut out uh, the, the sugar, the processed food, the carbs, and that's why they are successful. And Carnival certainly did that. Um, and uh, so I, I thought I'm going to, um, I'm going to give this a try. And uh, 
I thought, well, what if I tried this for three months and uh, called it an experiment? That way, if it all goes wrong, if the wheels totally fall off my wagon, then I have a sort of a, a an out because I've called it an experiment. And see, an experiment can succeed or an experiment can fail. So that is what I did. Now, it's now three months later and I've been following the carnivore diet and lifestyle for three months. And I'd have to say that this three months has been an incredible journey. Uh, it has just um, exceeded all my um, all my hopes and dreams for what it might achieve in my life and the impact it would have on my life. And uh, the results that I've seen in my own life have uh, been, for, for me, what I consider to be quite considerable. So I, I wanted to um, share this journey with you over the coming days and uh, in this video I've just wanted to share share with you why I got started and what's prompted me to start this lifestyle and uh, I'm going to come back uh, in uh, very shortly with a, a second video where I'm going to talk about how I actually got started and then of course some of the speed bumps the the obstacles that you will surely run into when you start this diet but uh, that's all for today. I, I just wanted to leave you with a, a quote from a, a book that I read that was very impacting for me. It was a, a book by a heart surgeon uh, called Philip, Dr. Philip Ovadia. And he wrote a, uh, a delightful book called uh, Stay Off My Operating Table. And in the introduction to his book, he, uh, he, he shared one piece of advice that for me, it was a wake-up moment. It was one of those aha moments. And he said this. It's just a simple phrase. He said, what you've got to realize is that the person responsible for your health is you. It's not your doctor's responsibility. It's not a responsibility that you can abdicate, abdicate to anybody else in life. You have got to take responsibility for yourself. You have got to become, in effect, your own doctor. I was stunned that a doctor was writing these words. But as I thought about that principle, I thought it's true for every part of life, isn't it? Um, you cannot sit around playing the victim long term because that road goes nowhere. It goes downhill fast. Um, with everything in life, you've got to come to that point where you say, this is my responsibility. I'm going to take responsibility for it and I'm going to do something about it. Now that's where I started. I wanted to do something about it and I started the carnivore diet. So anyway, I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching through to the end if you've got this far and uh, I encourage you to keep listening to like and subscribe as we are a new channel and uh, just trying to get started here. So appreciate your support and uh, love hearing from any of you about your journey uh, make a comment below, but uh, keep in touch and let's build a community, get a community together as we explore this wonderful world of the carnivore lifestyle.